Good morning, just been along the road to yard one to pick up some tools such as a hammer and change those two bits on the plow. I don't even know what they're called. New bits, got new bits for the plow, thankfully. So. Job done, hopefully they'll stay solid now. Bag of seed for Kev. Dunk's heading out to the plow. I'm just going to fill up Kev with seed. Landover's got some stickers on it now. Get a drill topped off. That's already needing a 500 hour service. Well, in about 30 hours or so, a couple of days. Hey, Doug. This is the last of the creek feed. I need to go and sort out feeding today because we're out of this yard. We're out of yard number three. Just needing a morning shifting feed about and getting everything sorted out. Come on, Coos, get the road. Just while Dad's here. I'm going to put the subsoiler legs onto the discs. They can be a wee bit fiddly, so it's quite handy having another person hanging about. There's that section. This is the awkward bit. You can't get that three-point linkage on the ST bar here low enough to pick up the discs. There is legs you can put on the discs. I've not actually put them on, I just left them flat, which is probably the reason why I can't get it on now. Dad will just come in here with a forklift, lift it up a wee bit, and then I'll hook onto it. I should just get in there. There we go, we're in. Just need to put the wee top link across there. There we go, it's a lot easier when you've got someone else. The only issue now, I've not got a front weight on the front and the packer is that much further out of the back, there's a lot of weight to it, so I'll be doing wheelies in a second. Luckily I'm not actually going anywhere, I was just putting them together so when I do put them on again, I'm good to go. Trailer of feed, I filled that up the other day, so I'll grab that, shift it along to yard three, not two. Then I'll top off some more, I need to fill up a yard two. Quick drawbar change. Took out the wrong pin. That pin holds this ram on, it extends the whole walk. This pin holds the drawbar here on. First time, every time. Job done. You saw me trying to line up the hook. Never goes first time. I think maybe 20% of the time I line it up first time. Not something I'm naturally gifted at, lining up a trailer and a tractor. I blame poor visibility in the New Hollands. That's what I blame. That's my excuse anyway. Dad shifted some of the oats there. He's probably shifted half of the pile actually. That's all that's left. Nada. Shift us out the road. We'll get another pile dumped in there. This feed is for these cattle and the ones on the other side. Other side I've got a feeder. These ones are just fed by hand now. Job done. I'll keep the cattle going for a wee bit. I need to shift, this is yard number three. I need to shift some feed to yard number two. And then that's all the feed sorted out. There's the pellets coming off. So that's summer harvest. Um, they press the oilseed rape. That's the byproduct coming out of uh, the pellet maker, or whatever it's called, pelletizer. After the seed has been crushed, and the oil's taken out of it. The byproducts made into the pellets that we add into cattle feed. And the oil is used, it's a company called Summer Harvest. They're based in this yard and they produce salad dressings and oils and nice things, which we actually sell in the farm shop as well. So if you see them in the farm shop, that's our oil seed rate that we grow that produces those. And the byproduct we use for the cattle and Summer Harvest produce the oil for their business. Oil seed rape's starting to come away just nicely. It's beyond the slugs and the flea beetle now. Doug's getting this end rig ploughed, getting on well now. He's got he's back on the five furrow. Quite a lot of time, we're ploughing the body of the field. Kev comes in and sows it, dunks away to another field, ploughing the body of it. Once Kev's finished the body of one field, he moves to the body of the next field and Doug can come back and 
do the end rig. Just means where the drill's turning, it's not compacting all the ploughed ground again. I'm just filling up this box. What's in here is used to feed the Highlanders and the cows along the road with Yonis. I'm doing it with a bucket because I don't want to spill it all on the floor. Filling up this trailer, but I parked like a plonker right under a spout, so I'm trying to avoid hitting that. Back here with another load. Let's see what the chips are like now. There you go. A few more in there now. Got focus. There you go. It was pretty much empty earlier, but there's I don't know, 200 kilo in there now. Getting this pile shoved up just so I can get the last of it, which is in that trailer. In. This old beast of a machine. The old Manitou. It's not actually ours. Anyway, shoved that up. I'll get the rest dumped in that wee space I've made. Feeding all sorted, all the yards are now good for a feed for a good few weeks. Plows off that trailer, go and put the sprayer on and there's quite a lot of barley now to go and catch up with pre-emergent spray. Ideally get it on before it comes through the ground. I just about left and forgot the dug. Think she'll figure out how to get through the fence? Come on! No. Useless. Have to get her down and round the gate. Can't work out how to go through a fence. Dump that there, Dad's gonna grab on the other side of that tank is the chaff out the dryer, the last of it, so Dad's gonna dump it into that trailer. Looks nice. This tractor's needing a clean as well, but no time for that. There's my sprayer, get the box on the front. Kev's finished sewing here. Took him a while to do that end rig of that 143 acre field. Anyway, it's done. It's ready to be sprayed. I'm not gonna do that one first, so got another field that was sown before that to go and do. I'll probably not get to that one until tomorrow. Wipe it out tomorrow. Well, I'll wipe it out. It's gonna take a wee while, 143 acres. Good long rounds though, you'll get over it quick. Off again. Clevis on. One handed. It's not a one hander, this. I'm not doing that one handed again. This one's easy enough one handed. I'll plonk you there. It's a bad idea. That was actually quite handy, having the camera above to look at. Someone was asking me uh, the other day about the hedge cutter on the fen. Um, apparently some contractors wouldn't wouldn't do hedge cutting in a fen because the view's rubbish. And they were asking how Kev gets on with it. And Kev said he didn't notice anything, so must be all right. Don't know whether it's the type of hedge cutter. Kev was thinking there's ones you get that are that sit a bit further forward or just how you use it. Kev finds it no bother. It's 30 or 40 hours off of its 500 hour service already. How much has that depreciated it? Kev's blocked my way out. I've blocked myself as well. Go, go, go while there's a gap. Fence looking good. Dirty, but good. Field number one. This was the first sown field of winter barley, which was after wet conditions. And there's a bit right by the gate. Needing to do a bit of drainage in here. Kev almost got stuck over there, he said. I'm filled up, I'm just setting up my GPS. This is getting a pre-emergence to deal with the weeds and it's also getting, uh, there's a chemical that I'm using for the end rig and an old fallow bit, which has got brome in it. So we're trying to kill off any sterile brome which is in the field, which we know there's quite a lot in here. If you remember back to roguing, um, there was a section in over there that was fallow for quite a few years and brome was in amongst it and multiplied and now there's a lot. So that section I'm going to spray off. So there's a chemical in the tank that's going to deal with the bro. Fingers crossed. 
What a lovely looking field. It's not been rolled, we just uh, didn't get the time to roll it to be honest. Cracking on, we'd rather spend the time getting new crops in when the conditions are good than putting rollers on a tractor. We've not got a spare tractor. Dunk's been kind of non-stop on the plough. Kev's been non-stop with a drill. I've been either disking or spraying or shifting feed and things like that. So ideally we'd have had everything rolled, but we just, time didn't allow us. See the sprayer going there in the background? Everything's going well. Yes, it is important to roll it. Locks in moisture and um, reduces the surface area for this spray to work on. Um, so it's the seed bed a wee bit. But it is not as important as getting the seed in in good conditions. That is priority, number one. Here's where Kev was just about getting stuck. Uh, I might actually not bother going in here. That would be a sensible idea. It should be okay now. It's been a few days since this was sown. So this field has probably about eight poles in it, which is actually 16 poles because I need to go over them twice. It's just a wee thing to complain about, but I'm still complaining. In the grand scheme of things, it could be worse. It's always so smooth driving over a freshly sown field in good conditions. Because obviously we've removed quite a lot of compaction from the surface, it's a bit of give in the soil. So when you first drive over it, it's like, whoa. Once you've packed it in the once and you're going over the tram lines again, it's, it's a lot more double. But the give in the field right now is just like bliss. If the poles aren't really close to you, you can just fold the outside section. If they're not within six meters either side, if the poles are in the first six meters, you have to fold the whole boom. If they're on six meters out to 10 meters, you can get away with folding half the boom, which I just did. And if they're on the final two meters out there, you don't need to fold them, that's spring loaded. And you can bounce off the poles. Just getting folded up to get around this pole and coming for a wee look at how things are going. So you go, they're starting to grow their roots. Roots have fired into life. Just starting to chit up the top there, head towards the surface. Well, that's good news. Happy days. It'll only be two, three days till that's keeking through the surface of the soil. Looking perfect. Conditions are just ideal. There's moisture there in the soil. It is beneficial for the, the moisture to be a wee bit of a reach away for the roots um, so that they have to delve deep down so that comes springtime and come and lead up to harvest when they're growing at their most and they're filling out the peas in the heads. They've got a big, big root system and they can draw moisture nutrition from deep, deep down. Light disappears a bit quicker now. Actually can't really, really see very well with those lights. Better in the dark. Job done, I've actually been done for about an hour and a half now. I had football, so I just managed to get finished before that. It was a bit late, but anyway. Back to the yard, vehicles abandoned everywhere. Anyway, swing this round to the shed. Job done. Chuck it in here, I'll be back in this tomorrow, so. That plow's back in action now after replacing whatever those bits are called. No idea what they're called. Hey Doug, good day. Cheers for watching, see you tomorrow. Oh.